My name is DJ Kane and I'm one of the founding members of Bomb Productions, one of the longest running DJ crews in the Central Coast um, from Watsonville, California. My earliest memories of hip hop uh, date back to about uh, when I was in fourth grade. Um, this was the early 80s when breakdancing became popular. Uh, breakdancing became popular worldwide and um, in order to, to breakdance, which we all tried to do, um, we had to listen to the music. So that's when hip-hop music really influenced me. And um, in order to find this music that we wanted to breakdance to or pop to, we really had to search. And um, it took DJs like Bubba G. Scotch, who was able to put this on underground radio, that really, really got me into music, um, not just music in general, but more specifically hip-hop music. So I would say my earliest memory of hip-hop music dates back to uh, when uh, breakdancing became popular in the United States. I started DJing when I became interested in hip hop music, um, listening to uh, artists like Egyptian Lover and when I heard what is a DJ if he can't scratch, um, I became really interested in the musical part of, of hip hop. And this was back in the days when we didn't have the internet, we didn't have YouTube, and there was literally nothing on TV that represented hip hop, so we had to just listen to it. Um, my, first, um, my first attempt at DJing was taking three different boom boxes. One had one tape on it, and one had another tape where I could mix on it, and then a third one recording it. And this was not hooked up through RCA cables or anything. It was just using the, the uh, internal microphones that, that Boombox had in the days. Um, and then, of course, stepped up to using uh, dual cassette decks and making pause mixes, um, eventually getting a cheap set of turntables, and then, of course, getting my first set of Technique 1200s. Um, so I, I didn't get my first set of Technique 1200s until I was about 17 years old. So I started DJing when I was about 14. So I spent quite a few years either borrowing turntables or um, just using tapes. You know, like the, the pause mixes for all the DJs out there. Everyone knows what a pause mix is. Um, and if you don't know what a pause mix is, you should probably look it up. So the creation of Bomb Productions actually came about long before the name Bomb Productions even existed. When, um, when DJ Dren and I, who Dren and I are, are the two founding members of Bomb Productions, we grew up across the street from each other. We're one year apart in age, and um, I moved to the street when I was about three years old, so he was two at the time. So <clears throat> our families knew each other. We grew up playing Little League Baseball together, but very, very quickly um, we knew that sports wasn't our thing, and we got into music. Um, so him and I had a few other crews that we uh, were involved with. Uh, a neighbor by the name of Neil, Neil Lamoral. He was the first person to bring DJing into our neighborhood. He was a few years older than us as well. Um, but as the years progressed, Jen and I became more established as DJs. We became um, a little more organized and actually realized that we were pretty good at what we were doing. Um, so we had gone through a bunch of different names. <clears throat> and... Um, when we, uh, the name Bomb Productions actually came about when um, we first got a really nice computer at the time and we were able to do flyers and graphics. So we kind of made a fake flyer just joking around with a friend. And um, <clears throat> we put sponsored by The Bomb. And um, my brother was like, hey, that's a dope name. That's a dope name. We're like, hey, well, maybe, that, maybe that's what we should go with. Um, so we took it from there and changed it to Bomb Productions. And uh, that's where the name Bomb Production began. But the actual crew of Dren and I, um, of course, there's a lot more DJs involved in Bomb Productions now, but um, <clears throat> it started way back when uh, I must have been in the ninth grade and Adrian must have been in the eighth grade when we started Bomb Productions, but the name uh, came about in the in the mid-90s. I think Adrian uh, says 1993, which is saying that <clears throat> our 20th anniversary is in 2013. Um, so, yeah, we've been, it's came out about, about 20 years ago, but we actually started DJing uh, quite a few years before that. We got our own radio show, Bomb Tuesday, uh, on KHDC through Muhammad the Verbal Tech. Um, the Verbal Tech used to have his show Monday through Friday, and um, he had different DJs come in on different days. Um, I, that's where uh, Casio started doing his Wednesday rec. I know Cutmaster Kurt it used to do uh, Fridays, and uh, he decided to let us do Tuesdays when... We had a DJ battle at the Flamingo Club in Watsonville, and uh, there was, I think, four finalists in the, the DJ battle, and all four finalists were from Bomb Productions. And this is when Muhammad, uh, the Verbal Tech, didn't know us very well, 
So I was thinking to myself, all these dudes in this DJ battle, all four finalists were from the same crew. Why are these guys not on the radio? Why are these guys uh, not more well-known? So he put us on the radio on KHDC, and uh, that's what formed uh, and created Bomb Tuesday. I think it's important for everyone to know that when it comes to Central Coast Hip Hop, it wasn't just one person that created the whole scene. It was a collaboration of a lot of people. Um, and I will probably say the most important players in the game are DJ Casio, DJ Jason D, The Verbal Tech, Bubba G Scotch, Bomb Productions. Um, shout out to Ebony Miss, The Flow Pros, uh, DJ Cooley B, Asphalt Poetry. Um, I know I'm going to miss a lot of people, so shout out to everyone that took part in what we created, uh, which is the Central Coast Hip Hop scene. And um, especially shout out to all my brothers from Bomb Productions. Um, I'm not going to name everybody because if I do, I'm probably going to miss somebody. But uh, Bomb Productions has grown into something that uh, Dren and I never expected. And uh, not only do we have a huge group of uh, DJs and MCs and producers who are proud to call themselves part of Bomb Productions, we also have a lot of people that have been influenced by our music and listen to our music and um, continue to create music. Uh, based on what they've learned and how they watched us and how, how they mentored us. So, um, once again, shout out Bomb Productions, The Warlords, um, everyone that took part in creating what the Central Coast hip hop scene is today. Now, Bomb Tuesdays, it was a strange evolution. What it's called is um, muscle, gangster muscle. That's <laughs> all I can say. They came. King was badgering me every freaking day. He would call in or we'd come by the station and say, when are you going to put us on? When are you going to put us on? When are you going to put us on? And I heard them play. I heard Bomb Productions play, so I, I really was a good, big fan of them, but they weren't on the show. So I said, well, you know, what you, what you do is you come by on Tuesday and um, we'll, you know, I'll, I'll let you play. They came by on Tuesday. I had such a good time. I said, well, come back next Tuesday. Next thing I know, they were there. It was like no formal introduction. It was just Kane's persistence about coming. Now, remember, they had a lot of good records, too. They had a lot of good records, and Dren could really cut. I mean, he was in the, t he was in the upper tier of cutting at the time. So, you know, Tom, bless you, you know, I love you like a brother, <laughs> but you never could touch Dre. <laughs> you never could touch Dre on the one and twos, you know. And, and yes, I know you're saying right now that how bad I am. But that's beside the point. <laughs> that's beside the point. Because you never want, oh, you always want to point out the fact that I can't cut. Well, okay, you're right. You're right. I'm be but I told you, my hero was Eric B. And see, that's all Eric B ever did. And I can do my Eric B impressions, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so I always told people that. I wanted to be like Eric B. So Eric, I'm like Eric B. But yeah, that's how um, Bomb Tuesdays came about. And then, you know. Whenever they were to come, whenever Bomb Tuesday comes around, he, you know, women come with them, you know, so that used to be nice. They would bring the chicas, and boy, I would have such a good time in that studio. Oh, that's right, this is on tape. You know, I really saw a lot of myself in Bomb Productions um, in the sense that these guys were hungry, and they had a vision, and they really were going to do what it took to push that vision through. And when they came, you know, on Muhammad's show and started up Bomb Tuesdays, they definitely knew what they wanted. They had an agenda, and um, they, you know, they did what it what it was going to take to push that agenda agenda through. And um, I commend them for that because, you know, when you're first starting radio, you kind of are like your your hands are tied in a sense that, like, you know, you have a host, and basically the host is the one who kind of like images the show and um, I, I went through that you know when uh, we first started with with Muhammad and I knew little by little if I kept plugging away and and you know tried to you know get my vision across you know little by little Muhammad would would, uh, would come around and eventually I think Muhammad and I built a really and cool one we built a very solid show and that's exactly what Bomb Productions did um, you know they knew what they were going to do they had you know a, a rotating lineup of DJs and um, they kind of brought more of a, a team aspect like a, a DJ crew aspect to uh, to the radio show and um, that was unique in, in, in you know in what it was um, I think they they kind of brought like a rock steady DJ 
uh, executioners type vibe to it. Um, and they, uh, you know, they also had a, had a wider scope of music they played. And I think that in doing that, that helped them have a, a wider variety within their audience. And when I say that, I mean more girls listen to, to their show than listen to mine. So, you know, there's no way I can knock them for that. I mean, who doesn't want girls listening to what you do? Um, but, uh, you know, I, I can't really remember the first time I met Bomb Productions and Kane and all them. Um, I think it was somewhere in the mid 90s. Uh, I know that we all traveled together down to LA, Bomb Productions, myself, and Verbal Tech, and Hanifa, and everybody. And, um, you know, we went down to the, to the rap sheet conventions and uh, had a blast down there. And, um, you know, I, I've seen Kane uh, highly inebriated on multiple occasions, as, has he, has, as he has seen me. Uh, highly inebriated so uh, we can't really like you know use uh, any of that evidence against each other because we both are guilty of the same crime but um, you know it's all good um, I, uh, I think Dren and Seth Dean and, uh, and Kane those are you know like I said very talented DJs and they um, they definitely represented Watsonville in a good way and um, I think the Central Coast the 831 was uh, a better place because those guys brought a, a, a unique perspective to hip hop on the radio. So, um, you know, big up Bomb P, man. You guys did your thing. You know, I do have to say this though about Bomb Productions. Um, there was like a period, like maybe like an eight month or so period, where on a weekly basis I was meeting a new DJ that said he was part of Bomb Productions. Every week there was somebody new coming around saying, yeah, I'm with Bomb Productions, I'm in Bomb P. These guys must have had like, everybody in Watsonville <laughs> was part of Bomb Productions at some point. But um, yeah, you know, the core DJs, obviously, the, the main ones were Seth Dean, Dren, and, and DJ Kane. And you know, shout out also too to Junkie J and uh, DJ Basehead. And uh, I think, uh, is the other kid's name? Uh, uh, DJ Dramatics, he uh, he was also uh, or is part of the crew too. But there was a lot of floating, you know. I'm down with Bomb Productions. I'm in Bomb Productions uh, type crew. So it was like, you know, at, at, at one point it was kind of hard to know who was who. But uh, yeah, you know, big, big up Bomb Productions. You guys, uh, you guys did it, man. You guys are doing your thing, man. So can't knock the hustle, man. Boom. Bomb Productions, man. Uh, innovative. Uh, always, always uh, staying fresh to 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 what's happening in the street and and, and keeping it fresh and funky uh, um, through, throughout the peninsula. Uh, they listen in. They they, they 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 know they know their history and they they, they, they prop it. They prop. They they give the props. To the history, because you know that's that that's how you further yourself in, in, in whatever aspect of life you go into. You, you have to know your, your history. We acknowledge the past and uh, how, how how groundbreaking our area, the Central Coast here. Uh, I mean, the whole Santa Cruz, Monterey, San this area, how, how essential it's been, and how important it is to to keep growing together because. Uh, no, 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 uh, no one else is going to be doing it. You know, they have to keep it. They have to keep it street level. They have to keep it going. They have to keep expanding the minds through through their articles. Um, I read the articles on Facebook, and they have to keep doing that because it opens up the minds and opening up opening up the minds and hearts and souls, and, and explaining to, to to young kids what what rhyme is, what rhythm is, and what soul is. You know. Is, is, what, is what definitely is going to make uh, music grow and, and, and have educated, educated uh, MCs. I hear in the area, uh, sometimes I hear young kids MCing at, at shows and, and, and I'm grateful because they've had the best education uh, that we could possibly have given the area, you know, through, through everybody from, from day one, from, like I said, all the armies, of, of underground radio, public radio, through through the cats on the street, ripping the mics, 
you know, they, they have, they, all, all, all of us have given them the best school. And that's why when I hear MCs locally at, at, at shows, at car shows, or, or, and I know they're from Salinas, they said, you know, they got the best education because they were listening to 90.9, KSPB, KUSP, and they got the best education. That's why, you know, you have some of the best MCs uh, uh, locally here, you know. You have Tommy Gotti, really, really, really cool. Uh, Bob Productions, you have, you, you have Risen One, you have, you, you just have uh, Tom and all, and all the fellas. But Bob, Bob Productions, creating beats, uh, uh, listening to what they, what they did on Muhammad's show when they were live on air with him, is incredible stuff, man. And they continue to, to be forefront in, in, in hip hop for our area. And then they keep pushing, you know, the Central Coast. Acknowledging what we did together as a whole, and it's important for all of us to know that, that it took all of us to to build this up, and it's and it's going to take all of us to continue it. And, and for those that, that move on, you know, the memory and the documentation will be there. So Bob Productions, keep doing what you're doing in the streets and in the media. Uh, keep doing it, man, yeah, because we need you. We need you. Uh, one can't do it alone, you know. Many aspects come together in one, and it's straight down, you know, to the hardcore. Uh, like I said, penetrate the heart and just get down to the nitty-gritty and grind it into the bone, to the marrow.